not what might be, not what could be, not what should be, what is, okay? And we have to make decisions based upon what is, not what we wish it was. The dream is the finished product. The nightmare is the setbacks, the adversity. The nightmare is the dream, Stephen. The dream that God placed in some of your hearts is that He would use you, that you would do something that would be significant. Now all you're experiencing is the nightmare and darkness, and it, it feels like that God has forgotten all about you. And my advice to you would be to stop identifying with the group and start identifying with the work. Because at the end of the day, guys, one plus one is always going to equal two. When you find yourself flailing in an ocean of why is this happening to me? When it feels like your guardian angel put in his two-week notice two months ago and just decided not to tell you. When it feels like God is a babysitter that's always on the phone where you get punched in the esophagus by a fistful of life. Remember that you will survive. Remember things could be worse. Remember we are never ever given anything that we can't handle. The human heart beats approximately 4,000 times per hour and each pulse, each throb, each palpitation is a trophy engraved with the words, you are still alive. Anything worth doing is worth failing over. Sometimes you just have to endure the nightmare. But if you want to give yourself to something, give yourself to something worth failing over. So cast out the lies, burn them down. listen to the truth. The truth is this. If you're willing to pay the price, and you're willing to do the work, and you're willing to take the time, and you're willing to consistently get up when you are knocked down over and over and over again, which is going to happen to you, if you're pursuing anything outside of the norm, you can make it here We all face situations that look like they'll never change. And it's easy to get discouraged and accept that it's never going to work out. Mountains represent obstacles, things that look permanent, like it's immovable. Depression can be a mountain. Feels like you'll always struggle with it. A mountain can be people at work that are not for you. They have more seniority. What can you do about it? Or how about a mountain of debt, lack, can't get ahead, it's been in your family for years, but this is a new day. That mountain is about to be turned to a molehill. If you don't have a purpose that's greater than yourself, you will never feel fulfilled. You can never be happy, and you can never uh, feel, quote unquote, alive. All right, it's a very empty existence to live exclusively for yourself. Chances are you will realize that the desire to rest was just weakness. It was just the desire to take the path of least resistance, the downhill path, the easy path. And by simply going through the motions, you overcame that path. When you stayed on the righteous path, the disciplined path, you stayed on the war path. If you choose, you can also find every excuse as to why you won't make it. You can find every reason if you look for it as to why you won't make it. Society's counting on you. Society is counting on you giving up. Because if you give up, then you could become dependent on the government system to provide for your whole life.
during that time, on your way, the pathway to your dream, don't let anybody else's opinion become your reality. Are you going to face this issue with courage and with resolution? I say lead. Lead. Step up to the challenge. Be the one that other people look to. Absorb that impact. Absorb that negativity. Draw fire. Say, draw fire. Bring that pain to me. You can't do this. Look, I don't care who tells you that you can't do it, you're not going to be able to do it, you can't win, the game's rigged against you, you're just a regular human, success is for other people, one that has what it is that you're looking for out of life, listen to those people. I want to declare today that your dream is greater than your nightmare. I want to declare today that your dream and your destiny is going to outlast the devil's nightmare in your life. He that endures to the end shall be saved. And weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. A person's strengths are often their biggest weaknesses. And so that also means that their weaknesses can be their strengths. I am weak, but I don't accept that. I don't accept that I am what I am and that that is what I'm doomed to be. No, I don't accept that. I'm fighting. I'm always fighting, I'm struggling, and I'm scrapping, and I'm kicking and clawing at those weaknesses to change them, to stop them. Some days I win. Some days I don't. Everyone goes through moments of doubt and despair. So you need something to protect your mindset against that loop because it will chip away at you. And the belief is very simple. You don't do things that don't serve you. You only have so much energy in your life. You only have so much focus in your life. You only have so much ability in your life to choose what you're going to do and what you're going to be and what your identity and your self-image is going to be. And when you choose to be one of these victims who thinks there's an Olympics out there for the saddest mother story, that means you have no room to move forward. You have no room for dreams. You have no room for aspirations. You have no room for the actions that lead to those aspirations because you're so busy filling your mind with the bad that's happened to you already in life that you have zero chance moving forward. But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, 
If you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this destroy me. I'm coming back and I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it and you're going to go all out to have it. It's not going to be easy. When you want to change, it's not easy. If it were in fact easy, everybody would do it. But if you're serious, you'll go all out. But each and every day, I get back up and I move forward. With my fists clenched toward the battle, toward the struggle. And I fight with everything I've got to overcome those weaknesses and those shortfalls and those flaws. As I strive to be just a little bit better today than I was yesterday. You don't think every out there has a sad story of some sort? Fuck, dude. Everybody has hard they gotta go through. There's not a single fucking successful person on this planet that hasn't gone through their version of really fucking hard shit. And the fact that I see so many people create their identities around creating sympathy for whatever their issues might be honestly disgusts me to the core. That's not what you're supposed to be about. So what's it gonna be, man? Are you gonna sit there for the rest of your life and talk about all the hard that's happened? Learn what you need to learn from the things that have happened to you and move the f on. Overcoming the negative conversation, that inner dialogue that's going on all the time, all the time. Even when you don't want it to be there. You can't stop yourself right now from thinking. You can't do it. It's going on. And so learning how to empower yourself, part of doing that is standing up to yourself. You've got to stand up inside yourself sometimes and say, shut up! That's why you've got to learn to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to stand up inside yourself. Working on yourself, watching that inner dialogue, it will determine the quality of your life. You know who has a plan B? There's the lose. That's a fact, okay? Every single person that wins big, every single person that you look at, every single person that you're inspired by, every single person that you aspire to be like, they only have one plan, and that is they are gonna win or they are gonna die trying.
when there is a challenge, any challenge, anything that you're facing, the only way to overcome the challenges that you face is to start walking. But when you look at the, the road to winning, people look at you and they're like, you're a success, all right? But your road has so many more steps. Those steps are infinite. Sometimes you get to see them, sometimes you don't. Sometimes they're there, other times they're wobbly. You don't know if that next step is gonna be there, but you have enough belief in yourself mm -hmm. to say, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna take that step. I may miss the step, I may fall, I may get I may get scraped, but I know there's another step. I know it. I believe inside me that there's another step that I have to take. As you look at your goals and dreams, every day we must convince ourselves, we must sell ourselves on that it's possible. Every seminar, every workshop, every book that I've ever read, every speaker that I've ever heard, it interrupted what I was believing about myself. Everything that you do, everything matters. As you go through each day looking at my life, Everything matters. T. Harv is right. How you do anything is how you do everything. I became obsessed. I became obsessed with being the baddest that God ever created. Am I that? I don't care. I believe it. And I was trying to tell him, once you become obsessed with something, obsessed, it's okay to be unbalanced for a while. It's okay. Don't be all this stuff people say. You got to be balanced. To be the best in the world at what you do, the best at what you do, you have to be unbalanced to find every bit of energy and strength that you have to pull it off. Then you get balanced once you become great. So, why? Because our obsessions become our possessions. You've heard this before, but if you really begin to think about what you think about on a regular basis, most of you are thinking about what you're worried about, you're afraid of, and what you're concerned or anxious about. And you don't take control of your thoughts. You don't take control about what you're putting in your mind. See, most people want it easy. See, easy come, easy what? Easy go. And I'm saying to you, whatever you gotta do, do it, because if you don't, life is gonna whoop you until you surrender. Take that step every day. No matter what you are facing, get up and start walking. Every time you lose, what do you gain from it? So every time I've lost, people say, you gotta jump right back up. You know, get back right on your feet again. And I, I disagree with that. After you lose, or when you get knocked down, stay down there for a minute. understand why you lost. What were the reasons? Why are you down here? Why did you lose? Why did you get knocked down? Because if you just jump right back up, you're gonna lose again and again, and you continue to lose the same way. Why are you so daggone crazy? Because I'm trying to be the best I can to give you the best that I am. And it takes being obsessed to where people think you're crazy. 
necessary as you look at your goals and your dreams, it's necessary that you have a, a strategy and a game plan to change the story that you believe about yourself. And that's an ongoing process. I've discovered, and many people have, that what we do, what we accomplish, what we produce is a result of the story we believe about ourselves. Because things are going to happen to you. I believe that the reason that most people go to their graves with their talents and abilities and skills in them is because of the fact, number one, many are like me. They didn't know that they didn't know and, and thought they knew. I thought I knew myself and I really didn't know myself as well as I thought. I've discovered that sometimes people can take you to a place within yourself that you can't go by yourself. Don't rest in the middle. Rest at the end. Winners rest at the end. You have to accept that all your excuses are lies. They are lies, all of them. Think about the things that you tell yourself, the lies you use to rationalize taking the easy road. Taking the easy road and leaving discipline behind. Think about them. You don't have time. That's a lie. And you're too tired or you're too sore too sore or you're just plain not feeling it. Lies, lies, lies. Because life does not reward people who wait to see what happens. Life and the way it works and no matter what you want to do when I say this, you can get mad about it, you can argue with it, you can say it's not true, it doesn't matter. And if you think that life doesn't work in a very simple equation, which is what you put in, you will get out. Mindset has to be destroy any limitation and move forward, move forward, move forward. There is a way, move forward. Most of us have been conditioned not to, to take a risk. People ask me all the time, what does it take to be happy? And I always tell them it's really simple. One word, progress. Progress equals happiness. If you keep growing, you're going to feel alive. And if you keep growing, you're going to have more to give. And when you're growing and giving is when life is magnificent. It doesn't matter how many statues, Oscars they give you, or Emmys, or how much money you have in the bank. So it's really an inner game. Once you understand that what the human animal is designed to do is learn, then you have to ask yourself if what has made the human animal the most apex of apex predators the world has ever seen, the most capable of completely changing its environment, what is it that allows them to learn fast? And the answer is failure. So the only way out of pain is more spiritual growth. And as simplistic as that sounds or overgeneralized, spiritual growth just means seeing more of life than just your self. And the list goes on and on and on. And it doesn't stop if you don't make it stop. So recognize. Recognize. The excuses are not valid. You know why the results are never there? Because you can think about it, you can wish for it, you can hope for it, you can think all about it, all as long as you want. But unless you get out every single day and put in the work, inch by inch by mother inch, you will never get there. So I want you to think about that moving into 2022. 
I want you to think about what you hope to gain in 2022. I want you to think about what you hope to achieve in 2022. And I want you to take the word hope and I want you to throw it on the mother frown and I want you to replace it with the word I will do in 2022. Everybody's focusing on the outside world and how there's a lot of things in the outside world you'll never be able to control. You can influence, but you can't control it. This, your mind, your emotions, your body. You have 100% control over what you do with these things, and that's where the game is won. You win the inner game, then you win the outer game. Watch your step! It's necessary you take responsibility for it. That you make it happen, that you don't give up, that you don't take any objection or disappointment or defeats personally, that you keep on keeping on, that you don't decide that I can't make it because you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, that you realize that's a part of the program. And here's something you've got to resolve. Say this to yourself every day. See, as long as you're breathing, you've got a shot at your dream. Those days, when I'm tired or worn out or just basically sick of the grind. What, what do I do on those days? I go anyways. It's not about the rain. It's what the rain represents. Life is always giving you a test. I'm trying to give you a way out. I'm trying to give you an excuse not to show up. You gotta have the mentality to show up every day of your life. No matter what life throws at you, it's our responsibility to show up to the Coliseum of life, prepare for battle. I don't care what you're going through, what life's throwing at you, it's your responsibility to find your new hundred percent. Take it upon yourself to do that. and take the hinges off. That's, that's how you gotta do that. You've got to have that kind of courage, that type of determination. If you wanna make it happen, it's you. But you've got to take personal responsibility to make it happen. I go through the motions. I don't really wanna work out, I work out. Don't really wanna get up and get out of bed, I get up and get out of bed. Work to build the skills that it takes to actually adhere to the plan, meaning your discipline, your fortitude, your ability to endure, your grit, your determination, your self-esteem, your self-worth, your confidence that you can achieve what it is you want to achieve. These are all skill sets. When you learn to develop these skills, even if you don't have the talent, continuously sharpen these skills, the ones I'm talking about, I can achieve great things. You have to lose your fear of failure. Failure is a part of the process. People who never fail, never try. You have to fail. You gotta get it wrong to get it right. You learn nothing from winning. You only learn from your failures. Your mind has to be stronger than your feelings. Think about every poor decision you've made in your life. There was more emotion that was involved in it than there was mind. Every single one of them. Think about it. Really much. Your feelings keep you in bed. Your mind tells you, get up. I'm sure people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. 
if you don't have what you want, stop telling yourself the story because you don't have the money, you don't have the time. That's bullshit. It's because you haven't committed yourself where you would burn your boats. If you want to take the fucking island, burn your fucking boats and you will take the island because people, when they're going to either die or succeed, tend to succeed. Here's the truth. This is the reality. Nobody's going to believe in you until you've already done it. Nobody's going to come and celebrate with you until you've already done it. The work is going to come before the belief, which means you're going to have to work for a long f***ing time by yourself with no applause, with no awards, with nobody telling you good job. And then once you start to build something and people start to see the momentum and they start to see the result and you start doing some things, then you're going to get a little belief. And then what's going to happen is you're going to believe. And then what's going to happen? You're going to go do a little bit more work and a little bit more work. The results are going to come more. More people are going to believe. Nobody f***ing believes in you because you haven't done anything yet. That's the reality. We all live in this bubble. What you got to do to get the life that God wants you to have, you got to put more air in your bubble. You got to blow your bubble up. Expand yourself. Take yourself out your comfort zone. Do you have the guts to fail? If you don't fail, you're not even trying. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. Imagine you're on your deathbed, and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. The ghost of the ideas you never acted on. The ghost of the talents you didn't use and they're standing around your bed, angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they say. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you today, how many ghosts are gonna be around your bed when your time comes? No matter how much emotion and feeling you may have, or how much hurt you may have, Life has to go on. I can't stand in the past and bathe in what was wrong. You want to make a change? You have to change your vision of who you are. You have to begin telling yourself a different narrative. And the narrative you tell yourself about yourself is everything. And if you tell yourself that you're a scared, undereducated kid whose family has never accomplished anything, let me tell you what you will become. A scared, undereducated kid never accomplishes anything because that's what you believe. You tell yourself that story enough, and it will become real. On the flip side, you could tell yourself a story of, you're a learner. You learn faster than most people. You're willing to put in more work than most people. You're willing to read more books than most people. You're willing to spend an inhuman amount of time every day improving your mind simply by getting new ideas into the system. Ten years of motherfucking work when everybody else is partying, making excuses, it's gonna pay off. Just like all of us, we all had our test. God gives us our test to really show how strong we really are. Test that we don't even know. Maybe losing our parents at a young age, or maybe losing somebody that affected our family, or did something, or somebody with a rush. Just whatever it may have been, so it may have affected us. It may be for you know, a matter of years, you know. And that's what it's really come to going, overcoming the adversity in life. It's what happens when you deal with that adversity. What are you going to do? You going to lay down for it or are you going to keep fighting it? And that's what life's about, fighting adversity and overcoming adversity and seeing what kind of person. Are you going to be bitter and mean because life wasn't kind to you or you figured it wasn't kind to you? Or are you going to take that and live life to its fullest means? And most of what you are trying to accomplish today or tomorrow is the same thing you were trying to accomplish 20 years ago. You're the same person. 
that you were then. If you lose that little spark that kept you motivated, because that's the most important thing. That's the thing that's, that's going to bother you more than anything else. You will look at yourself one day and you won't know who you are because you don't remember who you were. You know, sometime along the way, or maybe at 13 or 14, we let go of the little person that kept us going. That person, when we get about 13 or 14, we get embarrassed of him. And we push him aside and we don't listen to him anymore. And after so long of a time, maybe 10, 15 years, you don't even know him. You show up at your own door and you don't even know who you are. Your family doesn't know who you are. So it's important no matter what you do, no matter what challenges you go through, you remember 